Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before I show you the project I've been working on, a short disclaimer, uh, this project is still very experimental, unproven, and as such, dangerous. Uh, at this time, I have no intent to release public code for this project. Uh, the goal of these videos is merely to show the progress of this project from its current stage until its conclusion uh, when the goal's been achieved. With that said, let's get into the project. So my original goal when I started this project was to create a quadcopter that could fly itself to a given destination. The idea was sparked a couple of years back by Amazon's announcement that they were going to pursue drone delivery. Since they didn't have proof of concept at the time, I decided to see if I could figure out how such a system could be achieved. While the goal was simple enough, achieving it has turned out to be a fair bit more difficult. Much like the concept of a rocket landing itself upright at a set location, it sounds easy, but it's actually far more difficult to execute. Some of the problems I've had to figure out during this project include how to give the drone the ability to know where it is in relation to its destination, including its absolute orientation and altitude, how to communicate the destination to the drone, how to remotely monitor the drone's progress and being able to override it in the event that it strays from the goal, and giving the drone multi-layered error handling so it can make emergency decisions in the event of any number of errors. Some of these things I'll go over in more detail later, but for now, let's get into the drone itself. So this is a standard ZMR250 quadcopter with a obviously several modifications to the standard. Uh, you've got your motors, just like you normally would in your uh, electronic speed controllers, and the frame, and the battery. You also have on here the standard flight controller. Uh, this is something you'd find on any uh, consumer quadcopter, but it's usually fed manual instructions by way of a radio controller and receiver. Uh, the flight controller I chose to use for this project is a NAS32 Revision 6. Uh, it has a gyroscope and accelerometer for pitch and roll, magnetometer for heading, and barometer to calculate altitude. I'm sure some of you are probably shaking your heads at the age of this controller. Uh, I know it's a very outdated one, but I did start this project two years ago. Uh, at the time, it was still, still pretty mainstream. So the next part on this quadcopter is kind of hard to see. It's actually mounted right up above this flight controller. What this is, is this is the actual autopilot microcontroller. And this is a, an Adafruit Feather M0. And what it does is it serial communicates with the radio control unit and with the uh, flight controller to get distance and bearing data and orientation data. And then what it does is it takes that data and makes decisions about what it needs to do next to meet its goal. Then uses those decisions to send commands back to the flight controller and control the quad. This takes the place of what would normally be a standard radio receiver. The third and last microcontroller on board this quadcopter is the radio control unit at the top here. Uh, it's also an Adafruit Feather M0, but this one has the distinction that it has what's called a LoRa packet radio uh, built into it, and it also has a GPS add-on module. Uh, this unit acts as the distance and bearing calculator and as a go-between for the autopilot and base station. In automatic mode, it relays GPS data to the base station orientation data from the autopilot to the base, and the required bearing to the autopilot. I ended up having to add this controller to the chain because I found out in the course of experimentation that asking the autopilot to calculate new bearing and distance data and act as a radio in addition to its other responsibilities ended up adding too many clock cycles to the autopilot and made things very unstable. Now you'll probably remember a couple of the things I said I had to figure out in the course of experimentation on this was how to communicate the destination to the drone, 
and how to be able to remotely remonitor the drone's progress and being able to override it in the event that it strays. This is the unit that's responsible for that. This is the base station, and this is the microcontroller for the base station. It's also an Adafruit Feather M0. This one shares much of the same base code as the control unit, but this device acts as a primary listener for location and orientation data, and then outputs it to a serial console on my laptop in a usable format, so I can watch for progress and any issues. The only time it ever outputs data through the radio is during the startup handshake process between the quad and the base, so the quad can calculate its distance and bearing from the base station. So that'll do it for this video. In the next video, my hope is to actually boot up the drone in the base station and be able to show you guys some of the information I can see and do some experimentation to make sure that it's calculating distance and bearing properly and find out just how far the uh, quad can go before the radio loses communication. See you guys in the next one.